All right, guys, welcome back. We have a new meta report for the OCG. Very interesting. We have looked at this stuff in the past already, but now we will have a deeper look and you can see if we compare this uh, to old reports here. So the last reports, and you can see it on the picture, we always have Snake Eyes. We have Tempered Dragon, Snake Eyes, Tempered Dragon, and then once again, Snake Eyes, Tempered Dragon. And I think here, somewhere here, it changes or it was different. There was Jubel, there was Jubel and Rescue Ace. And then, yeah, this is the development basically, but for the past uh, four weeks before the introduction, of the new deck building set which introduced Malice, this archetype here, as well as Raziel, the archetype here being in front, which means that this is actually the most represented deck, but we can quickly hop right in and see this. We see, welcome to the week 8 and 9 of the OCG format uh, of July. This report, blah blah blah, 118 top performing decks, uh, 28 tournaments. There's something always very interesting to note here about the tournaments when it comes to the OCG. Um, the tournaments that are held in the OCG are normally way, way smaller than in the TCG so if you see like a first place deck list then sometimes it's from like a 20 person tournament which is a local here whereas a regional for example here in um, Germany uh, because this uh, is where I'm coming from and uh, where I play the tournaments normally has around 100 um, a bit a bit below participants depending on the uh, city in uh, which it basically is held. We have new product releases, uh, V-Jump promo, uh, Zerod, Migrator, I don't know what, but deck build, deck building packs, crossover breakers. This is where the Ryzeal as well as the Malice is from. So crossover breakers here. Um, and this is a deck building set, meaning this introduces three new archetypes. I think it is free. It's basically like the set that introduced Pearly as well as Rescue Ace and as well as uh, Mikanko. This was definitely the uh, less interesting or least interesting one. And the, the, the cool thing is that we are basically in the second week now. This is represented Presenting the first week, but we already have data for the second week. So we have this data here already, uh, which is over on Yu-Gi-Oh! Meta. This is from the first week that we take a look at here in the OCG Meta Game Report. And obviously, that's something to be talked about. So this is the week after. So we are looking at week one here, and this is week two, basically. So obviously, in week one, a lot of people will just try out the new archetypes, which is why you could argue that Ryzeal, as well as Malice being that high, special Ryzeal here at the, the first place, could just be because everyone is trying out the deck because it's the first week right and we can see 19.5 percent uh, percent with Ryzeal as well as uh, like a 28.8 percent with Ryzeal and this basically tells us um, that this is actually a good deck right um, because um, as you can see right here, oh, there, there are now I see it where we are ba we are basically including. Okay, this includes actually um, um, the the two weeks of this deck being out. But what we can see here basically was that people were trying out Raziel, and then the week afterwards, everyone was still playing Raziel, which means this is actually a good deck. So we can take a look at here. We have twenty three Raziels, we have uh, twenty three Snake Eyes, sixteen Fiendsmith Azamina Snake Eyes. We have taken a look at it, and uh, then seven pure Fiendsmith Snake Eyes. Obviously, Temper Dragon is still there. We have a Sky Striker Temper Dragon, Fiendsmith. You will also still in here my personal pick for the most represented deck at uh, the uh, Worlds. Honestly, we have because Malice and Rise isn't allowed there. We have nine Malice decks here, uh, which is the new Cybers uh, Dimension Shifter, Banish Your Own Cards archetype here. And then we have like um, a smaller archetypes into a Labyrinth, Magical Musketeer, Fiendsmith, and uh, Voices Voices is still in the mix right here. And then a lot of like uh, smaller decks um, that come up from time to time. Rise is a new thing from deck build pack crossover breakers that is based around rank 4 XYZ monsters. So if you're not aware, we have these rank 4 XYZ monsters, these two here. We can uh, take a look at this uh, for an example uh, deck list here, which basically uh, tells us a bit more. We have uh, the Ryzeal Duo Drive as well as the Ryzeal Dead Nether. And if you want to know more about these archetypes, I won't um, yeah, talk about them in depth here, but I've already made a video uh, both about Ryzeal and about uh, the new Malice stuff. Very interesting, obviously, coming to us in Master Duel in the future. You can check uh, that video out in the top right corner. But yeah, we have this new archetype rank 4 xyz's um that we are playing here we can play the dimension shifter which um actually makes it obviously a very strong deck because a lot of decks are vulnerable to dimension shifter then again if you look at this list here rise itself can play dimension shifter temper dragon plays dimension shifter malice plays dimension shifter snake as does not and then i guess you will also not so there are some decks that uh, are basically negatively impacted by a dimension shifter but then again there are also decks that are not and yeah 
we can see right here we are playing obviously Maxi. We're playing the new Maxi Fuvaros. Uh, we are playing um, uh, the Ghost um, Ogre, uh, probably because of Tenpai. I would guess um, this should be a list uh, that finished first, right? Uh, which had 20 teams, 60 participants. Here you can see what I'm talking about. And then again, this is quite big, I have to admit. Uh, we have 60 participants. They have a lot of these uh, three versus three tournaments that we don't really have here in the TCG, but they have them over in the OCG. Very interesting. You have all these base level four monsters, which there is one. I think it is, uh, let me quickly check. I think it is this one. If this card is normal summoned, yeah, this can basically, um, when it's normal summoned, special summon uh, another Razor monster from the deck. So another level four, which already gear brings you into these uh, rank XYZ Raziers. And the, the interesting thing for me is that I don't really think, by the way, I, I, I have said this in the other video, but I'm very happy with how they, um, um, they made these ar this archetype here because you are basically locking yourself into rank 4 XYZs, which is why we only see rank 4 XYZs. I mean, we see a Zeus here. This is only for being dumped to the graveyard, so we never make this. But we have a Zeus. Obviously, you can make a Zeus if you don't lock yourself. But I think it's really cool that this deck basically locks itself out of generic boss monsters and then uses like a strong uh, rank 4 XYZ toolkit here, like Baguska or Obviously, if you don't have a good turn, you can just go Baguska and then pass. Um, and the interesting thing is that we end up on cards like the Raziel Dead Nether, which, which can, when your opponent activates a card effect, quick effect, detach one material from this card, then target one card on the field, destroy it. This normally has three materials, and which means you can do this three times each turn. But there are not these big like uh, interruption boards that you will make with this deck. So what I am um, honestly a bit surprised by is why this deck performs well, as I'm not quite sure um, how you are super effectively interrupting your opponent. I guess the grind game of the deck is quite nice, but yeah, somehow this deck seems to work, seems to be very, very strong here. Um, very interesting, and I'm uh, already hyped for this coming to Master Duel. You can let me know in the comments what do you think, but I think that the um, the artworks basically of these cards are very amazing. Um, but yeah, this also says Ryze is vulnerable to spell trap board breakers, so they would decide an anti-spell fragrance and solemn judgment. Uh, very interesting here. Uh, this is probably because you don't have an Omni Negate on your end board and you also don't have stuff in your graveyard that you want to trigger like for example fire king snake ice has so an evenly match, uh, matched probably hits quite hard here uh, and we can see right here is exo sister i think if this is sophia not quite sure but this kind of reminds me of Exorcist, right? Because we are also playing the Sakitama and the Akitama, or how they are called. Um, because obviously Exorcist are also a rank 4 XYZ um, deck, um, and they share a lot of the exotic monsters. You can also play, for example, the Trap Tricks of Lesia, where you can, if you have it on the field, activate, for example, this here, the Trap Trick, that if there is a card activated in the hand or graveyard, you can pay, I think, 2,000 and then negate and destroy it. So uh, it's super funny that you can play like different XYZs from different archetypes. We have the Utopic Ray Lancer here. We have obviously cards like the Abyss Dweller or you can make Extinction Knight, kill the opponent's board. You have like the Tornado Dust Dragon here destroying spells and traps. So very interesting, very um, I think toolkit like this deck is in the sense that you can pick a different uh, options for different game states and then just use it. You also have this dragon here I think that can kill. Not super sure here. I think this can like get the, the uh, attack points of all XYZ monsters under it or something and then just kill. So so we have different options here, clearing the board, kill your opponent, uh, locking the graveyard, uh, having a spell trap, uh, yeah, interruption, Baguska and a spell trap, destruction here, very interesting. I like how this deck uh, um, basically approaches the game. And then we have Snake Eyes here, nothing too new, nothing too fancy. We have the Azamina cards that I've talked about in the past. We have the Fiendsmith stuff that is obviously still in here with the new Fiendsmith card, which is quite great. Here are the Azamina fusion monsters that allow you to basically make an Omni Negate. So I'm really not sure why why we are why this deck is played less than this because um, I think this should be way stronger but maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something here honestly uh, Book of Eclipse is one of the board breakers that is being added uh, side and against Ryzeal Book of Eclipse changes all mods to face down position effectively disabling Ryzeal Dead Nether and Ryzeal Cross we can quickly take a look at Dead Nether is this one and wh which one is Cross Ryzeal Cross is this um, something that uh, what is Ryzeal Cross Rise your plug in, rise across. 
You cannot exorcise your monsters with the same. You can target two Rise cards in your graveyard, place them. Once per turn, an opponent's monster is activated. Monster effect resolve. You can detach raw material from a Razier monster. Ah, this is an effect negation. This is the permanent effect negation on the field. Ah, this is the negation, okay, that you can use if you have an XYZ monster face up. So obviously, Book of Eclipse, booking the boss monster, you could say, the dead netter down, helps here. So this is why we are seeing this cited in, um, in um, yeah, in Fiendsmith here, basically. Uh, Fiendsmith Snake Eyes. And uh, we talked about, or the, the, the report basically talked about this deck being very weak to evenly match. So here we see the card people already adapting. Then we have Temper Dragon. Temper Dragon has a poor matchup against Raziel Dead Nether effect um, because uh, it could destroy the Temper Dragon monsters whenever a card or effect is activated, making it difficult for Temper Dragon to amass enough monsters to synchro summon. This makes sense. Honestly, it can also destroy the field spell. It can destroy the base monster so that you can then not synchro summon. Obviously, you want to destroy these monsters uh, optimally in the main phase, not in the battle phase, because they can then just synchro away. Uh, but yeah, if you just destroy the field spell, so this I guess is quite nice. So um, this might be why this deck is very good in the current meta game because if you have the dead netter on the field and your opponent just plays this second summoning you can just destroy it or can it only destroy monsters let me quickly let's check you can um uh, you can when you're running, uh, no it can also destroy this field spell which is at one and then your other temper monsters would no longer be protected which means you can just kill the other temper dragon monsters and then your temper dragon opponent has a big problem so very very interesting here that the deck, the Razor deck, is basically uh, negating a lot of the stuff without negating it, actually. Um, yeah, this is what I, they are also saying here. That is to say that a Razor Dead Nether 2 effect could be chained to an activation of Sangin Summoning to destroy it, and there would be no protection for your Fire Dragon Monsters. This is what I talked about. And then because you can do it thrice each turn, you can destroy the other Tempered Dragon Monsters and then call it a day. We have Melis. Melis is a new team from deck and building pack. Crossover Breakers is based around Cyber's Link Monsters. So as I already said, if you want to check out how this deck works, click on the link in the top right corner. But yeah, we have just these malice monsters if they get banished then they can summon another thing or they can search a trap card and then you can uh, activate the trap card uh, the turn it was set if you banish a malice monster which can then be resummoned and then you can use them for link material um, to climb into the uh, terror herds and other like um, um, yeah cybers boss monsters uh, basically uh, very interesting people were expecting this to be the most dominant archetype from uh, this uh, new pack but turns out Raziel seems to be the more impactful maybe it's just a meta in which Raziel is put in that helps it to dominate. Um, but I guess time will tell, the future will tell. And the, the interesting thing is, and that is something to, to note here, uh, which definitely, uh, definitely difference, uh, differentiates this Raziel as well as this Malice archetype. This is like only the first support wave for Malice and for Raziel uh, because they will get an additional support wave in a future pack. Uh, this is how it always works with these deck building or deck, uh, deck building packs here, a pair of crossover breakers. And um, they they already are very dominant, especially Ryzeal. Um, it wasn't the case for a lot of other uh, archetypes coming from a deck building sets like uh, Pearly, for example, or like Rescue Ace. They were played in the beginning and they were definitely not bad, but especially, for example, Rescue Ace um, needed some time to really be dominant or you can take a look at Vanquish Soul. So sometimes you also have these deck building packs where just one archetype, maybe not even one, is basically good. So from the one that um, that um, Vanquish Soul was in, only Vanquish Soul was actually good and made it to the meta. And then it wasn't even that dominant and needed the second support wave but Raziel comes in here with the third support wave being the best deck in the game you could argue and then Mel is also very very strong so I guess these decks will have very interesting future especially especially Raziel so we might see a Raziel being the dominant thing in Yu-Gi-Oh's meta for the uh, future here because obviously decks like Snake Eyes and Temper Dragon will get less support and will be weaker over time whereas Raziel will get more support and is already very very strong but let me know in the comments what you think of these new archetypes if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, hitting the thumbs up and the notification bell, and we will see each other in the next one.